Okay, so <laughs> I got this uh, last Friday in the post. It's now Monday, and it's been sitting here because I haven't had any enough time to do anything with it. So today we're just going to do a quick unboxing and take a look at the quality of the 3D printer. So this is the uh, Anet A2 3D printer. <coughs> Okay, so in the UK at the moment, this 3D printer is actually one of the cheapest you can get. Now, I picked this, well, it was, it was supposed to be £126, I think, but I had um, a coupon code, £10 off coupon code, which come uh, from eBay. You know, sometimes you get them in your um, email, uh, £10 off purchase over a certain price. Uh, so I got this for, what was it, £116. That's the only real reason why I bought it, because it was so cheap. Uh, I have heard good things about it, and um, I have have actually got kind of like the original of this kit because the original one, this is basically a copy of the TiVo Tarantula so uh, we can have a look at it and compare the quality of the parts and yeah, just uh, see what the main differences are Right then, so I've got everything unpacked uh, so what do I think of the initial quality of the parts in the box? Well, actually I've got to say they're pretty good um, all the parts look decent and actually some of the parts look better than the uh, parts that you get with the TiVo Tarantula. Um, so this is actually a copy of the TiVo Tarantula. <coughs> um, I'll put a picture of it up here so you can see it. Um, but yeah, some of the components are actually uh, slightly better built than the TiVo Tarantula. Uh, so here is the bed carriage here. Now this is a good one millimetre thicker than the TiVo Tarantula carriage. And that is hardly, well I mean I can't bend it but I'm not going to go mental. But uh, the one on the TiVo Tarantula, you can easily flex it. And it flexes like when you push down on the TiVo Tarantula. Right, so the thickness on the uh, motor mounts, uh, you can easily see this. I mean that is an extra three millimeters of material on the ANET A2 and this is the same thickness as the bed this part here which comes from the ANET A2 and as you can say here is the bed the uh, bed carriage on the TiVo Tarantula now you can easily see that the ANET A2 acrylic is a lot thicker and this this flexes so easily in comparison to the ANET uh, bed carriage and obviously everybody knows this has always been a concern on the TiVo tarantulas and that's why there's been upgrades for carbon fibre carriages and so yeah this looks to be you know a bit of an upgrade to the TiVo tarantula anyway uh, and then also like the z-axis motor mount so on the TiVo Tarantula, the parts which hold the motor are around about this thickness, and so you've got like an extra two, two and a half millimeter thickness in these motor mounts. So you shouldn't get any flex in this part here, hopefully. So yeah, they do look slightly better quality. <coughs> um, and then also. Uh, this is the 2017 version of the ANET A2 and you get this LCD screen with the rotary knob instead. Um, on the old version you get the push switches, five push switches uh, and that's okay, you know, but it does take quite a while to cycle through the um, menu system and with a rotary rotary knob like this it's a lot quicker to get through the menu system and I prefer these myself personally <coughs> um, the hot end here uh, I'm not exactly clued up on hot ends really um, as long as they work uh, that's the main thing the one on the TiVo Tarantula uh, works really well I've got to say uh, it's not the same as this uh, I don't know how good this one will actually be. This one's slightly bigger, slightly larger, heat block on it. 
and crawling block, whatever it is. But uh, yeah, this should work, hopefully. Uh, I would actually make sure there's no crack inside here because on these rails, just like the TiVo tarantula as well, there's all little bits of swarf stuck to the back of these protective plastic bits uh, from when they've cut them. So obviously if you're going to be undoing this in your house, unwrapping everything in your house, I'd put a sheet down so you can capture all these little bits or do it outside would be probably a good idea. <coughs> But yeah, um, some of those bits could have got inside here, down into the nozzle. And if you're not going to bother taking this apart and you're just going to assemble it, uh, you're probably going to have a blockage straight away. So I would definitely take a look in there. You do actually get the wrench with it as well, which is handy. <laughs> but yeah, it will probably be a good hot end, hopefully. And the one on the TiVo Tarantula has been really good. But as I say, it's different compared to that one. You don't get no layer fan with it though, so you're gonna have to print a layer fan off. Um, you have to print a layer fan mount off yourself, and obviously get a fan to hook up to it. It does have provision on the board for a second fan as well. Just here, You've got the main fan there, which is for the um, cooling on the hot end. And then you've got second fan, which would be for a layer fan. Alright, so one other thing with this uh, main board, which is a slight upgrade to the TiVo Tarantula board, is you do actually get heat sinks on the MOSFETs and the stepper drivers, which is a good thing. But the one thing you don't get with this is a fan to cool the main board. So the best thing to do would be to get like a PC computer um, case fan, a 120mm that would basically fit that whole thing and keep it lovely and cool especially if you're going to be doing long prints once you've got it all set up but yeah that's just uh, something to think about uh, also the timing belt on the ANET A2 this is PVC steel reinforced timing belt so this shouldn't have any stretch in it hopefully, like the uh, TiVo Tarantula one is just standard rubber and after a while, after a couple of weeks that will stretch and then you'll have to retension it. So this should hopefully uh, not stretch quite so much anyway. So that's a bit of an upgrade on it. Uh, I've never used this before but you know, should be okay. Can't see there should be any problems with it anyway. <coughs> Yeah, also, obviously these metal shavings, uh, this power supply unit here was in a box, but obviously shake it out, or if you've got an air duster, uh, make sure you dust it out to make sure there's no little chips inside there, because if not you're going to have problems with the electronics. <coughs> and uh, yeah, all the fixings, they all look uh, really good. Uh, it does actually come with... Uh, acne threaded rod so it's not like your standard like lower you go on a standard Prusa um, some of the standard Prusa um, i3 kits you do actually get acne threaded rod in there and there's another piece of rod in there and that is for the filament stand to hold your reel so you do actually get that as well with it so that's kind of handy uh, anything else uh, uh, you do have to do a bit of wire stripping, but you don't need to do any soldering on this. Everything has um, got plugs on it. There's only like uh, two two sets of wires you've got to strip back. Uh, the wires to the heater cartridge, you need to strip these back. You do obviously get some snips in there, which you can do it with, but you'd probably be better if you've got your own set of wire strippers. And also on the power lead, you're going to need to strip that back as well. And that's probably the only, you know, bits you really got to do is just basically assemble it. Yep. Uh, the only other thing I did find was on the heat bed here. There's a scratch going across here and the quality control people have come along and put a little bit of uh, permanent marker over the top of it. Just to hide it, you know. 
I will say you get your little bit of PLA with it, but uh, to be honest with you, uh, I would just get a decent quality spool of um, PLA to test it with. There's no point testing it with this, I don't think. Waste of time. It probably won't be very good. <clears throat> but yeah, that's everything anyway. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to say. Yeah. Um, there's no instruction manual in the whole entire box, so I expect it's probably on this little SD card here. I would think, hopefully. But yeah, that's everything anyway. So I've probably been talking too long now and bored you all to death. Uh, but if I haven't bored you all to death, uh, go and click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell at the side there. And then when I assemble this or test it, uh, you'll get a notification and then you'll be able to watch that video if you're interested in these type of videos. And also give this video a thumbs up if I didn't bore you too much. And uh, comment down below. Uh, it'd be nice to hear from you. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.